Okay, I'm just going to go through a project I've been working on for Building Smart, which is some example files to help users um, understand some of the new features of IFC4 a little bit better and to help them with the process of implementing and testing uh, the adoption of this uh, new version of the, of the standard. The project's being hosted on, on GitHub. Um, it's a C Sharp project and it's basically storing the code of the scripting part of it and the um, example files that are generated from this code. So if I click on the examples folder, you'll see here a listing of the IFC files that are being produced so far. Um, we've started with the uh, example uh, hand basin being represented as a NURBS advanced rep. Um, so if we scroll down here, you'll see the Cartesian points on the vertex and then the spline curves and spline surfaces which are representing the, the faces of that particular object. I guess if I quickly um, come to Rhino where I can import that particular file then um, we can see what that shape representation looks like. So I've got the files also locally here on my hard disk. So you'll see here then the uh, representation of a hand basin with the with the uh, advanced prep, and then also on this on the GitHub we've put on a couple of different um, other represent alternative representations of the same thing. So a faceted prep and the tessellated shape representation, which is the triangulated face set to to make it much reduced number of lines to represent the triangulated uh, representation of that particular object as a meshed version or a faceted version. We've also set up a few beam tests, um, index colored map, reinforcing examples and, and others and I'm sure they'll be if this is successful and, and, and appreciated by the users we can quickly add more and more examples to this. The project at the moment has three dependencies. One is the IFC library of my own that I've been working on in C Sharp, and we'll have a look at a, creating our own or adding an example to this in a second. Then we'll, I've also been using the Open NURBS library as a means of accessing geometry, um, in particularly vectors, lines, curves, points, and, uh, and, and that type of thing. So it's, it's handy to have that as a, a library that we can reference in this project. If I change to Visual Studio, then we'll see um, or, or look at the code as it's represented at the moment. It's really just at the moment a simple dialog with a button to press. And if we look at what happens if we press that particular button, is that basically it finds a the parent or the root directory to store the files, and then sets up uh, or creates instances of the class examples that we've done so far, and says to create the example. So in the um, in the example, it basically sets up some common data, just creating a project and a, and a building, and then calls on a an overridden method in each class to, to generate the data specific to each of them. So if we go have a quick look at the index color map, then you'll see here that it's taking a list of vertices, creating an IFC contusion point list, uh, then the the references to the to the different. Um, co coordinates for each of the triangulated faces and then creating say a building element proxy. So this is sort of calling on a combination of the open nerves geometry and then my own library just as a series of constructors um, to try and um, to create this particular um, example script. Note that you can we can sort of control the, the numbering of the thing which we might make organizing the, the generated IFC file a little easier and we can also add comments to the different classes as part of it. So what I thought I'd do as part of this demonstration is just show how to set up a uh, or add an example to the script. Okay, so I'm gonna I've just set up a base class and I'm gonna make this then um, inherit from the example base class that, that I've created, and then I'm just gonna override the method of generating the specific data that, that this, this class wants to do. So I'm gonna create a, a column um, as part of this. I'm just quickly going to go to the uh, and grab the code just so I don't have to look up the dimensions basically of the eye shape profile that I'm going to use. So I'm going to use a European IP200 which has these particular dimensions and here I've also set up a material class um, for, for part of this. So really then it's just calling on a whole bunch of constructors to create the IFC example that we're going to create. So I'm going to create a material profile and 
the arguments that this constructor has is basically the database that's hosting it, the name, the description which is optional, the material that we've already got, and then I'll use the IP200 as the profile, zero as the priority, and then as, um, category string, we'll just leave as an uh, empty string here for the moment. I could then say I want to create a column type from this material profile. And again, the arguments that it wants is it can let the my program or allocate a unique identifier as part of this, but we could control it. I'll use the same name, same uh, description. And then the other arguments, say the material profile. The list of property set definitions is optional, so we can make that null. And then the column type, which is pretty limited for a column but just make that say it's a column as a, a predefined type then I can create a standard case column and this is some sort of special overloaded constructors that, I, that my library contains so the column type will define or assign then the material property to the extrusion I can create a new line as the position or the axes of this column. So um, the, unit, the units for these examples at the moment is millimeters, but we can add a scaling factor to all these examples if we wanted to produce them in inches or feet or other particular units. You can see here on the Rhino geometry library that I can say set it in an X direction for its orientation. Cardinal point I can set just to be mid and then the element parameters perhaps not so important and we could add clipping planes to the shape representation if we wanted to. So that's probably enough then to create the example. I'll just need to go quickly to the form code and say I also want to create this. So I'll say new column uh, it should be in the same namespace. Maybe I'll just build up make the class in 10. I'll just search in, in Accessible. Okay, so I'll create the new column. Oops, there's an extra S here on the main space, so if I go back here, new column dot generate example and then there's one of the arg only argument at the moment is the path so I can build this and then run it okay not much of a response at the moment one of the other ideas we've got is to add in the testing regime of, uh, of the validate scheme validator to the to the uh, to the run process so if we have a quick look then at the examples is that the column example has now been created and if we quickly open that in say in uh, the quick browser then we should see the set up the material the eye shape profile the material profile set in the background and the column standard case with its shape representation here for it okay so using git um, I tend to personally use git bash but there is the window shell also for um, also for um, those that aren't so familiar with with git so I could check the status of the code okay and we should see that the new files were added so for example the column.cs um, file here so I can say git add and then commit the code push it to the github internet seems to be a bit slow sorry OK, 
Okay, it'll push those files back up to GitHub. Okay, and then if I go back to GitHub and refresh, see now that the column example has been added and we should find that our column has been added to our test cases. So yeah that's hopefully an introduction to the work. I think certainly there's a lot of, of useful examples that could be added to this and I look forward to getting feedback and suggestions from any of you that are interested in the project.